Hey, what's happening, guys? I thought today we would take an in-depth look into the ESP32. Take a look at some of its innate functions like the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, uh, the touch sensing, things along those lines. So, in setting all that up, I've got my ESP32 here. This is the one that I got from icstation.com. And I have an LED plugged in to IO5. And I have a 2.4G external antenna here with the IPEX connector also plugged in. So I thought the first thing that we could look at would be the Wi-Fi. And um, our friend Fred from uh, Germany uh, also has an ESP32 and we've been talking back and forth and he tells me that the ESP32 here underneath this can gets extremely hot. So I thought we would take a look at that as well. And to that end, I have my Kawisi USB detector here hooked up. So we will me measure the voltage and the power, or the voltage and the amperage of the ESP32. Then we can figure out the power. So let's get started with our first experiment, which is going to be the simple Wi-Fi client. Now this is an example directly out of the ESP32 library, so I'm not going to go over the code. You can just pull it out of the library yourself, but basically it allows you to turn the LED on and off from an external web browser. So for that, got my phone here and let's begin by powering up the ESP32 so far so good right all right let's zoom out of here a little bit Now, got my phone here. I'm going to put in the code. So, for us today, the address is 192.168.1.66, and I found that by simply looking at the serial monitor. So if I hit the click here to turn on, watch the LED. And there we go. The LED is lit from the web browser. Now while the Wi-Fi is active, let's go over here to the Kawisi USB detector and take a look at the power. So we're getting 5 volts in and we are sinking 110 milliamps. Calculation that's about a half of a watt. So I'm going to give it the finger test here and it's warm enough that I can feel it so it is warmer than body temperature all right let's turn the LED off and there you go the LED is off. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just bring up 
a simple sketch. For instance, the blink sketch. And we'll come back over to the power monitor and see how much power it's taking just with the blink and no Wi-Fi active. All right, the code is uploading right now. And it is complete. So now we are only looking at 20 milliamps. So that's what, a tenth of a watt? That is a big difference in power. And if I feel this again, it feels about the same. Uh, later on, I'm going to let this thing run with Wi-Fi on for a while, and we'll put a K-type thermocouple on it, and we'll test the actual heat. All right, next up. All right, now we're going to look at the deep sleep timer. So here is the code. Uh, it's ESP, deep sleep, wake up cause, T, wake up reason. And the wake up reason equals ESP, sleep, get wake up cause. And then it will print which one of these it is. In this case, we're going to be using the timer to wake us up. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to set the thing to go to sleep for five seconds. That's ESP deep sleep enable timer wake up, time to sleep times microseconds to seconds factor. And then after five seconds, it will wake up. So I've got it running right now. If we bring up the serial monitor it is asleep at the moment. Now it's awake. Here is the, uh, this is that boot up that happens every time. Now it's asleep. And now it's awake again. And then it goes back to sleep. So let's go and look at the uh, power consumption. All right, we are running the uh, deep sleep example here. So while we're asleep, no power is being used, zero amps. When it wakes up, we get 20 milliamps for a second, and then it goes back to sleep. So you can see how that is a very useful function. All right, on to our next experiment. Okay, so next up is our hall sensor, which is the magnetic sensor. And if we look here at the code, you can see the command is quite simply hall read. So what this is going to do is it is going to print the value from the hall read to the serial monitor. And you can see right now it's reading around 20 and lower. So as we look at the ESP32 here on my flashlight underneath the clip is a nice big magnet. So if I bring it over here and put it now look back at the uh, serial monitor and you can see that the numbers have gone up significantly. All right. Let me try something here. All right, there's the serial plotter. Let's see if we get anything out of that. Oh, look at that. Now we can see the effects of the Hall sensor. So, pretty cool. All right, on to our next experiment. Okay, next up, we're gonna take a look at the capacitive touch sensor. And you may notice that we have a little wire sticking out there. And that little wire 
is plugged into GPIO4, which is also touch interface zero. So I just wrote a little program that says if you touch the GPIO4 or T0, light the LED. So if I grab this, the LED lights, I let go, the LED goes off. So what happens is it's always reading a value and when you're not touching it, in my case, it's reading somewhere around 50. And when I do touch it, it drops down to around five. So I'm just using a simple if statement saying, you know, if touch read T zero is less than 20, then digital write GPIO five high, else digital write GPIO five low. So that's the touch sensor. And there are 10 of these on here, 10 separate touch sensors. That's pretty cool. Next. Okay, the last thing we're gonna look at today is Bluetooth. And I pulled an example sketch out here that simply broadcasts a Bluetooth name that we can change. So, if we take a look at my phone here, it is now called ESP32 Simple BLE. And now if I connect GPI zero to ground, we should have a different name. So let's turn Bluetooth off and turn it back on and let it scan and think about things for a minute. And now we have blue <laughs> BLE 32 name 57. So it, it's just grabbing a timer when I do that. So that's Bluetooth. And if we look at the power consumption we are seeing 130, 140 milliamps. So I'm gonna let this run for a few minutes and then we'll be back and take a look at the power it's using. Alrighty, so we've been running this at 140 milliamps for about 20 minutes or so. Let's bring in the thermocouple And we'll see what kind of temperature that we're getting here. So it looks like around 120, 130. Don't know exactly why that's dancing like that. What the hell? So we'll call it around 130 Fahrenheit. About 45C. So there you have it. Mein guter deutscher Freund. It's hot. Yes, indeed. And there you guys have it. Everything we looked at today, the Wi-Fi capabilities, the deep sleep, the hall sensor, the touch sensor, the Bluetooth. And in our last video, we looked at the high and low speed variable frequency and pulse width PWM. So I think that we all now have a pretty good understanding of the features and what is available in this awesome new board. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the section down below. And if you like this, I'd sure appreciate a thumbs up, comment and share, and I'll see you guys 
next time.